Over many years, the courts in Illinois, in what we consider to be a misinterpretation, have severely limited public access to Illinois rivers. The result has been that only a small percentage of our waterways are considered to be truly public and the rest are subject to the whims of the riparian owners. Those rivers designated as public tend to be the larger working rivers with a long history of major commercial usage and as such they have never been seen as particularly interesting to paddlers. In reality they can be incredibly beautiful and these waters present many unique challenges for paddlers. There is much to be learned and occasionally discovered. This reach of the Mississippi, beginning with a rare War of 1812 battle site on Robinson's Island and ending at the confluence with the Rock River, is a stunning example of the beauty of a larger river and of the pure adventure of locking through one of the great locks of the Mississippi in a small boat. Exploring one of our large public working waterways is not something to be taken lightly. You must prepare by acquiring at least an intermediate paddling skill level because strong winds high waves, and major barge traffic must all be contended with, and all can be extremely dangerous for the novice paddler. The Rock Island Arsenal is one of the largest munitions plants in the world. It is an amazing experience and thrill to be sitting in a 14-foot cedar strip boat as millions of gallons of water are pumped out so that you can go on your way. Another major thrill is having a swing bridge begin its swing just as you paddle by. The Fox River begins near Waukesha, Wisconsin then flows south through Illinois' chain of lakes and then through one suburban community after another, turning west at Oswego and finally ending at the Illinois River near Ottawa. The reach paddled in this video from St. Charles to Aurora contains four dams and one recently removed dam south of Batavia. Each of the four dams can be portaged with relative ease as this stretch of river is used each year for the Mid-American Canoe Race in June, which attracts several hundred paddlers. From the latter part of the 19th century until well into the 20th, the Fox was a working industrial river with numerous dams placed every few miles. Some of these dams generated electrical power 
as recently as 20 years ago. Other dams provided power for numerous heavy industries. Nowadays, almost all of the dams are non-functional and most are in need of major repair or renovation. For many of us, the fox is an old friend. We drive over it to work every day and we return in the evenings. And as a result, we tend to forget how stunningly beautiful it can be. There are places on this reach which appear to be very much unchanged for hundreds of years and the wildlife can be stunning. As a direct result of the Clean Waters Act and the activities of an environmental activist known as the Fox, who was known for stopping up industrial outflow pipes and on at least one occasion poured the effluent from a company's outflow onto the CEO's carpet, the water quality in the Fox has steadily improved. While it is not ideal, it is now to the point that a wide variety of game fish are regularly caught on this reach. On November 3rd, a near-perfect fall day, we paddled the 11.1 miles from Spring Valley to Hennepin. Spring Valley is one of many old river towns that are found on both sides of the river.
the best rivers we got. Yeah. <laughs> one of the biggest. Yeah. Well, this is a stretch I haven't done before, so I'm looking forward okay, to it. Well, you'll enjoy it. I mean, it is industrial. If you walk down to the bank, you're going to see barges tied up and so forth. But, you know, it's a stretch that normally people don't do. Yeah. Towboats, barges, and canoes do not mix well. It is extremely important for anyone paddling any of these large rivers to understand that tows cannot stop in less than several miles, so it is your responsibility to avoid them. This reach of the Illinois contains the famous elbow where the Illinois, instead of flowing due west to the Mississippi, suddenly turned south, creating an almost 500 mile long detour. It was this detour which was the reason for the building of the Hennepin Canal, which directly linked the elbow to the Mississippi. I had previously paddled most of the reaches of Big Bureau Creek. The creek at several points parallels the Hennepin Canal. And so I was curious as we paddled down the Illinois as to where the canal actually came out into the river. But once we accessed the waterway that we thought might be the exit of both the canal and Big Bureau Creek, we could not find anything that actually looked like the canal. A creek kind of ending where we are, but it shows the canal over here somewhere is a, a much larger body. On inspecting the map, we found another stretch of the canal that seemed to parallel the river a little further down. When we got over there, we found a newly created earthen dam with several feet of water on one side and very little on the other. We began to see signs of the canal alongside. After walking about an eighth of a mile along the berm, we came to a grove of trees. And in the grove was what appeared to be a ruin of some kind. And as we walked towards it, we could see that it was one of the locks of the canal. The lock was fairly well silted up, but a lot of the original equipment was still visible. We even found a date in the concrete. What is most fascinating about this lock is what I found when I returned home to do some research. It turns out that originally there were 33 locks and that the first on the Illinois River has actually been underwater for over 50 years and was inaccessible and apparently only with the building of the earthen dam has anyone been able to visit the locks. And we must be some of the first. Actually, much of the canal still exists and it has been made into a linear park. Construction began in 1890 Construction of the Eastern Main Line began in 1894. The canal was 155 miles long. And due to a widening of the locks on both the Illinois and the Mississippi rivers, the Hennepin Canal was obsolete before it was completed. Throughout most of its existence as a functioning canal, it serviced mainly pleasure boaters and it ceased operation in 1951. 
we felt very privileged to be able to explore this little known reach of the canal, which has been unseen for 50 years.